Vincent, before I start um, inundating you with questions on your, your salon strategy and what you're doing during lockdown, I would just like to very quickly um, run through quite an important point. So we have made a slide for it, um, which I'm just going to switch to. Um, I can. I'm going to share the screen with the slide, um, which is just the. Uh, we're just going to very, very quickly run through the relief measures that are offered by government and by private entities and through the banks. Um, firstly, is the UIF TERS benefits for extended lockdown. Um, initially, they said that the deadline for this is 30th April, but I believe as lockdown was extended so the, the the application date for this was extended we're actually in the process of finding out exactly um, what the latest picture is on this and we will be publishing an update on this as soon as possible if there is an opportunity to um, to reapply or to apply for any further benefits then we have um, through banks the COVID-19 loan scheme and the South African Future Trust funding. Now, these have both been around and available for a while through your bank. Um, we have heard reports from people that have said that, um, that one or the other is now oversubscribed and full. Um, however, the banks are still sending out notifications saying they're available. So it's still worth investigating them and applying for them. Then the other one is the debt relief finance scheme for SMMEs, which obviously includes hair salons as being small businesses. Initially, this was businesses only and it was then extended to sole proprietors. Um, we have not as yet found that anyone has had huge success with the debt relief finance in the salon world. However, I have a friend who, uh, who runs a very small handyman business down in Howick, and he applied for the debt relief finance. He, he applied for everything. And he got one of the bank benefits, I think it was the Future Trust funding, and he got a loan through the debt relief finance scheme for SMMEs. So um, some businesses are getting success, and um, he was not a BEE registered business or anything like that, just a plain old small business. He applied and he had success in those two. Um, he said they were very helpful. They held his hand every step of the way. They were quick to respond. So everyone has a different experience. I know there's a lot of negativity circulating and I do understand that some businesses have had the application declined, but some are getting success. And I would strongly recommend that you apply for everything. And the reason why this is important is because when it comes to negotiations with your landlord, you need to prove that you have exhausted every avenue. So even if you apply and your application is declined or you don't have success, you have still ticked that box. And the fact that you have gone and you have proactively done it may stand you in good stead when it comes to your landlord's negotiations down the line. So just a very, very quick um, update. Those are the, the relief measures offered, and those are why it's very, very important to please apply for everything. If anything new comes along, we will try and stay on top of it, and we will uh, notify you as soon as possible. So, you know, here's hoping, let's keep positive, and let us, um, let us hope that, that down the line, some relief is available for the people who desperately need it. And now, welcome, Vincent. It is so lovely to have you here. And Hi. Hello, everyone. Our panelists. Always nice to be here. Now I'm going to... Morning, everyone. Um, oops, no, I'm not. I'm going to, to move again to uh, the next screen. And let's take a look what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about practical solutions to surviving lockdown with you. And I would please like you to explain to us what the Serenity and Air Design team led by yourself has done to generate revenue. 
from the start of lockdown onwards. These just give us a quick step-by-step -step overview. Okay, Jesse. so when the lockdown first started, you know, the most important thing that we thought about was keeping in touch with our clients, okay? And keeping that personal, you know, touch. Um, this is important because when the lockdown was announced and it started, we obviously worked extended hours, brought in as much turnover as we could, and we thought three weeks, we could tide ourselves over, we'd be fine, all right? Mm. And that's how it worked. Then the lockdown was extended, and we thought, okay, well, where to from here? When we started applying like all the relief funds, banks, um, we did, exhausted absolutely every avenue. Uh -huh. Okay, with no success. Uh, the only place we were successful was with our UIF, which paid out beautifully, no problems. It was quick, simple, Brilliant. very easy. Brilliant to know. But then we realized, oh, yeah. And then what happened was we just kept those channels open with our clients, you know. We then started um, voucher promotions. Because then they announced that we are in all these levels of the phase out process. And we are in level one, which leaves us with no timeline. Before we had a timeline, we could plan and it was a lot easier. Now we've had to resort to all sorts of measures. So we are still keeping our voucher promotions running, uh, which has been very successful. And we are pushing our retail big time because now people are needing retail more than ever. But, you know, we've had to even resort now to, you know, doing the home color kits. Okay. Which, you know, a couple of weeks ago was still quite controversial. And if you had to talk to me about a week and a half ago, I would have told you it's a no from me. But right now it's either adapt or die. So we have to do whatever we can to survive. Yes. We have yes. now put these color kits into place. And I would just urge all stylists. I mean, I know we're all there and none of us have ever been in this men mental or financial state of mind before. Yes. And, you know, you have to all do the right thing and stay within you know, your life. So I would discourage hairdressers from doing hair from home, doing hazards. Um, you know, you are at risk. You are putting other people at risk. And it's just not the right thing to do. All right. So as stylists, all of us are very, very lucky that we can think out the box. Um, the one thing that I love about stylists is how innovative we are, that we, we will never just sit down and look at a wall. Okay, we would see the window, see the opportunity and go for it. So now we've gotten on board with do, doing home color kits. Okay, now that our suppliers are supplying us with color. But I think you need to be very responsible in doing this. So you can't just mix up your client's regular color, hand it over to her and say, there you go. This is important. You have to have the right permit in place to be able to do things. Yes. You can't do it with the right paperwork in place. So you need to apply for a permit, CIPC permit. You can do home deliveries. So what we are doing is we are for our clients. We literally put color in one container, developer in another container give it to them in a kit with a brush, with glove, everything they would need. And then we deliver it to them sanitized in a very safely way. We don't enter their house or their premises. Uh, we don't offer to apply the color for them, but we have made up a video tutorial on how to do your own color application. And each client that then purchases this will receive this video. And she will then see how to apply her color, step by step, how to emulsify it, rinse it, etc. do the whole process after she's had a one-on-one -on -one consultation via uh, either a video call or however you would do it. That's up to you. 
But I'm talking from a very small salon perspective. There's only three of us in the salon. So for us, it's been very easy to stay in touch with our clients and keep that personal connection going, which has made it so much easier for us to bring in revenue. And, you know, like I said, if you spoke to me a week and a half ago, I would have said no to home color kits. But now that we don't have a time frame anymore and we've sold our clients vouchers for cuts and blows, thinking, okay, the lockdown's going to end on a certain day, they would then come in, redeem their cut and blow, and then do a color. But now they need a color to tide them over till who knows when. None of us know. It could be two weeks, it could be two months. Um, so in the meantime, we've had to make a plan. And that's what everyone needs to do, is you just need to make a plan and you need to bring in revenue because you've still got cost to cover. Um, fortunately, we, as a small salon, we are not in a shopping center, so the negotiation with our landlord was a lot easier. And we've had relief from our landlord, which has been great. However, this way we can't operate from our salon, otherwise we'll be paying our full rent. Mm -hmm. So we've had to resort to rather doing deliveries and being a small salon, we can do that because in a fairly close radius and that's what we're doing. We're going the delivery route and bringing in revenue that way. And well, people I think, have been um, very generous. Our I, I think that's fantastic. Have been fantastic. And I um sorry, I've got a little bit of a, a low connection down here. I think that it's absolutely fantastic that yeah, at this answer. time a uh, salon is being proactive and also that you're taking you're tackling the changing landscape because I think uh, we've all had to cope with a lot of change during this lockdown and a lot of adjusting of our own. Um, ideas about what is the most right and relevant thing for a client base and what is perhaps not advisable and I think that the the, the home colors are now that something that more and more salons are actually starting to realize is an essential because um, it's keeping clients away from the dreaded box color and it's also allowing them to have a personal touch from the salon and a feeling that they're still being cared for, that the, the salon is sort of going to any lengths in order to, um, to help them. And it is, it is a change of mindset. Yeah, it, it has been a big change of mindset from my point of view. But what I've been doing is we've been encouraging our clients to just do sort of like a hairline touch up for now, yes. just to tide you over you know, just hide the greys. Uh, we sort of, you know, obviously we would stay away from supplying a client with bleach or anything like that. Um, if a client is normally a highlight client, we would say to them, look, rather stick it out and wait. Um, Cause you know, if you were even to decide, well, I can't deal with my regrowth on this blonde hair, I'd rather go dark. You're still gonna have to pre-color your hair it's still a process. You can't just slap something on and expect it to come out great. It's not going to work. So it's a limited. And it's a limited service, limited to certain um, specifications. Yes, and it's it's a it's a matter of being responsible about the whole thing, you know, and not just trying to be greedy about it. Yes. You can't just sell any color to any client. It doesn't work. That's why I advise a consultation before you go ahead and do this, you know? Well, this is fascinating. And um, our, our slot is now, our, our time is up and we need to, um, to move on. But if anyone has any questions for Vincent, please type them in the chat box. We will try to address them at the end. And if we can't address them at the end, we will, um, we will address them at a, um, at a later stage and we will get back to the people in the, in the webinar. Um, I'm just yeah. having a little look through and I don't actually see, I think uh, at one stage I really did think I saw um, our next guest, Bridget Stannard uh, online, but I think she may have had difficulty connecting because I don't see her now. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, um, I'm going to 
change your role to an attendee. Thank you so much, Vincent. It was awesome to hear that input. I think it's, um, it's, it's a very honest and hopefully um, a very helpful input. Um, then we're going to now move on to our, our slideshow. And um, our interview with Bridget Stannard would have been this, just so you all know. Um, and um, I know that what, what Bridget wanted to share with us is that, um, and again, this is uh, regarding the, the perspective of the landlords, is depending on the relationship you have with your landlord and whether and what you have been able to negotiate, um, you may not want to open your doors too soon. If by doing so, it's going to mean that your landlord considers you to be trading, even though you are not trading at a level that allows you to bring in enough revenue to sustain your business. So that is something to consider. If you know you can open your doors and you can actually be sustainable in the new landscape, um, doing retail sales only and possibly uh, um, you know, other related services that don't involve any actual contact with clients, then yes, go for it. But if not, you have to be careful because you may need to remain closed until you are capable of trading at a level where you know you're going to be able to be viable. And I think that's quite an important point. Um, so now our next uh, slide is Shaleen. So I'm going to um, switch back here and I'm going to hopefully find Shaleen and promote her to a panelist. Let's see if this works. There we go, Shaleen, I can see you there. And I'm going to now um, promote you to a panelist. So you will be joining us. And um, hello, it's so lovely to see you. And I'm going to then now switch back to, um, to our, our screen, just so we can take another look at, um, at what you're going to talk about. And I know that you're also, um, very, um, you're, you're another recent convert to, okay. to having so can you see me? decisions. Hello? You're sideways. It's wonderful. But we can see oh, sideways. So then I'm just going to have to go. Now you're, now you're upright. <laughs> Is it the right way? Yes, it's the right. No, you're doing a handstand. No, I'm just going to have to hold it. That's what I'm going to have to do. Yes. Okay. Uh, give me one second to just try. See if I can. Um, if I can. See if I can just turn this. Uh, no. All right. Yes, there we go. That's fine. I'll hold it. Hello. Hello, everybody. So you you're going to continue with the uh, the the discussion on direct color sales. And I would love you just to talk us through your mindset, why you changed your mind, how you are doing this, what terms and conditions you're putting into place. Okay. So I think for every hairdresser out there, this is a really, really hard um, one. There's a massive debate always between the fact especially brands that we use in salon versus the fact that they do carry a supermarket line so i think a lot of hairdressers i'm going to start by explaining what it is about a color a box color that normally causes a problem so when a consumer buys a box color they buy the color that they think they are and often somebody who is dark blonde thinks they like brown or somebody who is light brown thinks that they're black and someone who's black is looking for a blue black because it's not black enough. That's <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah, what could go wrong? What could go wrong from there? So the <coughs> other problem is that 90% of people don't follow directions. Most of us can't even read a recipe and follow Most it. of us can't even obey lockdown. <laughs> That's exactly. That's exactly. So there you go. So what the companies do is they double the pigment load. So in those boxes, the pigment load is double and it pushes in so much more pigment and the, hence those colors go darker than they would before. And that's why we as stylists struggle to lift them. So with that in mind, we also have to understand that, we're, that there are two sides to every hairdressing business. And I have a business partner for that reason. My business partner runs runs the business. Okay, he runs the financial side of the business. He ropes me in. 
he will let me know if we're doing too many things or too little. And there's often, we have that, that arm wrestle and it pulls me straight back in. My side of the business and my team and my stylist is that we run the people side and we're there for people. And there's, so, so the, on the one hand, we've all got debts that we have to meet. We've got to pay our rents. We've got to pay partial lights and water now, even though our places are locked, there's still going to be a level of billing. There's credit card machines, there's uh, music, there's Samro license. There's a lot of fees that are just not going to be dropped in this time. So to just keep the lights on, we need a level of turnover because we have no guarantee if this is going to be two weeks or another six months. And the problem is if it's going to be another six months, I think that the industry is going to be in serious trouble anyway, no matter, none of us are going to be okay with that. So we've done one of the vouchers where I've had clients buy vouchers and that's absolutely amazing, but we need to make sure that our clients can now collect and redeem those vouchers in order for them to trust the process. Secondly, I think that hair, not think, I know, hair plays an emotional role in every one of us. When you've been lying in bed and not feeling well, the minute you get into a shower and you wash your hair, you're feeling better already. It just, it's, it's the turning point. And it's also the emotional turning point for a lot of people. So for me, we're also dealing now with our clients and their well-being and how they're feeling. And that is what's so important for me now. What are we doing for our customers based on that? Now, um, in terms so, of, uh, in terms of, um, of caring, what are your parameters for this service? It's obviously not going to be a permanent service for you and your salon. It's a service for right now. Is that correct? Correct. So if you are doing this, if you are coloring correctly, so we actually had a chat yesterday and I kind of believe that there's an opportunity in hairdressing going forward is that this is now truly the age of the colorist. It is the age of setting yourself apart and doing stuff differently and beautifully. So if your color is beautiful and you are doing multi-tonal, multi-dimensional color, you will be keeping your clients anyway. Now we're going to have to do very um, bespoke. So if you're doing that, you are doing bespoke colors anyway. So if you're mixing your color, you're gonna take a container and you're gonna put your color mix in one container, your developer in another container, and what we'll do is call the client, check, we'll make a time with the client. So I probably would mix that in the car. Take that through to the client and let her, she'll pick it up from outside her gate. And then we will video conference her as she's putting that color on. So that we can guide her and keep, um, whether it's a friend or a partner or someone who's doing it for that application. Um, so I think that that's one of our primary things that we want. And we're trying to encourage people to stick to hairline or T-panel. The other big problem is if their regrowth is already over an inch, you should be then starting to do a mid-length uh, color away from the roots and reapplying. So we probably, um, I chatted to a friend yesterday, I had a great idea, of lighter so that we've got less damage to fix and to say to that customer, we're going to drop a shade lighter so that if there's a problem, we can come back and repair this. And also the client needs to, to sign a disclaimer. She needs to be responsible for this because there is that fine line as well as should we really be worrying about this in lockdown? So we kind of worrying because we're worrying from an emotional point of view for our clients and from a turnover point of view, we have to generate a soft turnover in order to survive. I think another point that um, also, I, um, another yeah. point I thought of um, while, I, while I was actually washing my hair the last time, I thought to myself, you know, um, at the moment, um, people, a lot of people are under a lot of stress. And uh, also, um, uh, quite a number of people who've actually contracted the coronavirus have either had poor hair growth or they've had hair loss. Um, so, you know, at the moment, just generally in society, there's an, probably no one's hair is actually in optimal healthy condition. And you don't want a client to associate 
the color that you supplied them with the fact that suddenly they might have noticed that their hair is a bit thinning because they're so stressed. So I would also suggest just from a, a hair news advice perspective is that before you even um, offer the service too much, you put out a little notice to your clients, just educating them on hair loss, explaining that in times of stress and in times of illness, hair loss is more likely to be prevalent and that if they notice any hair loss, it may be related to these two and they should please contact you for the correct um, shampoo and conditioner to try to cut it. Just so that people don't mistakenly associate one thing with another because in times of panic and when things are happening so fast, it could also be the case. So Jassy, part of what we've done, firstly, we, every client will be consulted through, uh, through a Zoom or WhatsApp. Secondly, we will not take on clients if we do not know them because we haven't been able to do an allergy test and that's a big problem. So if we know our client and we have a history with our client and we have their color and we understand what bespoke is and what we are supposedly mixing for them and we, we're talking about a level 7 to 7654, blondes are going to have to wait. Because if you try and color a blonde, they are going to go orange. So this is targeted at gray roots, targeted that, and you cannot do this without consulting your client and checking what's going on. Because I agree with you. I think there's been, nobody's sleeping. Everybody's losing hair. Everybody's bulging up. Do we still have you there, Shaleen? Um, or is it a connection on my side? I think we may have just uh, either lost me or lost Shaleen for a moment. I hope it's Shaleen. But if you can hear both of us, please raise your hand. And if you can't hear either of us, please let us know where the problem is. Jessie, we seem to have lost you. Are you there? Yes, yes. Okay, um, brilliant. Uh, I think we, we had a little bit of a, um, a glitch in glitch. comms from, from your side, but you're back loud and clear. Oh, now. sorry. Where, where did we, what did I say to you? <laughs> where did we get to? <laughs> um, where did you lose? You were saying about how, um, about how you can't do blondes and about how you can't okay. do existing clients. And that no, so no new clients because of allergies, I think I said to you. Yes. And also that we will only stick to customers that are our customers. Yes. So there are two, and there's two parts of that. I think it's not okay to take somebody else's customer at this point in time. Um, it's really not a fair thing if the industry is working collectively together. And secondly, we have not done an allergy test. We do not know what the outcome is going to be. We cannot truly look at the hair, part the hair, see the hair, and make, so everything yes. would work on yes. assumption and not a pure consultation. Yes. So, uh, uh, and I think that's the important thing is we losing a level of what we've set as a benchmark as professionalism. So we are re-exploring the new parameters. And I think the parameters are really quite serious about how we treat each other as an industry now. I agree. I think that's a very, very important point. Shaleen, we're going to wrap up with you now. Um, and I know you are Hello. Russians have a, a massive schedule for your day. So any questions for Shaleen, please write in the comments and we will ask Shaleen about them. And we will, um, we will then, what we'll probably do is when we publish the YouTube video. Um, we will do the questions and answers below and come up with some, um, some ideas based on the questions that are coming up in the chat panel. So, Shaleen, thank you so much. And then, yes, Jesse, if anybody needs advice on this or wants to get hold of me, they can get hold of me on my Instagram or something, and I'll respond to those messages that as well. Absolutely great. Thank you so All right. much. For Thanks that. for having Happy me. Happy home stealing. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank you so thank much you. For, for joining us. Yes, thank you. Right. So, now we're just going to have a uh, quick look at our next, um, our next slide. And we have Caroline Michael. So I'm just going to find Caroline, hopefully. 
and um, I think uh, Caroline is here under Caroline. I'm hoping so. We'll see who comes along. <laughs> but with any luck, we should have Caroline uh, joining us as a, a panelist now. Um, and Caroline, I, th I think you're muted. You just need to unmute yourself. Um, let me see if I can um, can assist you there. Uh, unmute audio. Okay. So Caroline, we should be able to hear you now. Can we hear you? Hello, Caroline. Caroline. Okay, so uh, we don't seem to unfortunately have um, have Caroline here. Um, I'm not sure if we can try and troubleshoot that while we are um, while we are going forward. Um, let's just give Caroline a moment and see if she can um, she can get herself onto audio. Hopefully, we can. Um, we've had a lot of people asking about the pricing of the home kits. I think that's a very interesting question. It would be nice to hear from people, other people who are doing this, what they're charging. I think um, everybody's home kit is including different things. Caroline, we are seeing you. Um, we are seeing you. There is success here. We just need to hear you now. Um, so any way of, uh, of um, making sure that we've got a, a speaker there, that we can also hear you as well as see you, you are unmuted from our side. Let's give Caroline a moment and hopefully we can sort the technicals out. Um, I, um, I hope we can, but and if anyone else can hear Caroline, please let me know. And um, if, uh, if anyone else is offering home kits, I know people are, are including different um, items with these home kits. I saw that some salons are offering clips and um, a towel and a cape and a brush and a bowl. Uh, I think everybody is offering different pieces of equipment. I think the brush and the bowl are pretty standard, but um, you know what else you're offering will obviously also affect the pricing. And of course, there is that. Um, that tutorial or consultation. I think what some people are doing is when they consult their, their clients, whether or not it's for the color, um, they're charging for the consultation and then they're actually um, taking. Dean is being Dean is being Hello, I can hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> can you hear me loud and clear? <laughs> Okay, great. I'm so glad we can hear you. So let us go okay. now um, back to our shared screen. And you're going to talk about the importance of education during lockdown and also facing change. So please, let's have your input regarding that now. Okay, so basically, I mean, obviously, during lockdown, it's been, um, it's new for everyone. We all try to keep afloat. And um, what we've done as a company is created a train of education so everyone in the salon and um, sorry, I'm getting so much of feedback back from me. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay. You're coming and going a little bit, but there's no feedback. Okay. Um, so at Innovations, what we've done is created a train of education where every um, stylist does a uh, video or a product review on what they like and um, um, obviously whether it's a hair technique, whether it's curling, braiding, etc. And just basically inspiring each other. So the most important thing I think during this lockdown is for each person to actually educate and push yourself a bit further. Uh, whether it's getting to know your brand better, whether it's getting to know the, the retail products better. And as leaders, I think it's most important that we actually lead and we actually educate and obviously share our passion through the industry. Yes, I think that is so valuable, not only for, uh, for keeping the, the skills honed, but also for keeping morale high and for keeping, um, for keeping people feeling like they're part of the team and that they, um, you're going to hit the ground running when this is all over. 
Absolutely. And uh, there's so much of um, free education online. So if you guys look online, there's so many videos, tutorials, Instagram lives, um, you know, so there's so much. Yes. And I think that it's so great because the entire world is basically on, swimming on the same ocean here. Yes. You know, um, and, and there's no excuse because we have all the time now. You know, especially like I think that with in business, you know, um, with whichever brand you actually with, get a brand um, that obviously that sees your blueprint, that understands you as a salon owner, that's backing you 100%, and get on board with what education they're doing. Fantastic. Now, the other point that we wanted to touch on is the reinvention, rebirthing, rebranding, and obviously. Post lockdown, things are not going to be the same. I mean, it's a harsh reality. Salons are going to operate in a different way. Um, some businesses may have to change or even um, close their doors. And what is your take on this? Um, how are you approaching the necessity of change? Well, you know, um, with the rebranding and reinventing yourself, you know, it goes deeper than just thinking uh, business. It goes uh, from each individual for us to start thinking differently, working differently. Because remember, your hours are not going to be the same. You're going to have skeleton staff that's coming in. So it's like you're going to be doing clients on one on one. So I think in that aspect, you have to look at your business on a whole completely different because you're not going to be turning over the same, but you're going to actually be doing more hours of work. You know, so if we have all these things in place and look at it from that point of view and know exactly in the direction you're aiming at, like working seven days a week, uh, opening longer hours, you know, um, getting your stylist actually geared up and your staff geared up for the change in the way we actually used to do business. It's going to be no longer eight to four kind of thing. You know, yeah. we, we, we basically going to be, like I said, completely rebranding and rechanging re everything. Yes. I think pricing is also something that will have to be looked at because if you have fewer clients at one time, it's going to mean um, a change in your pricing. I attended a webinar yesterday, which was hosted by ESP and Marissa from the spa consultancy mentioned um, a very good point, which is that for, for the duration of while times are tough and challenging and you, you're needing to perhaps alter prices to make ends meet, you should put in what, um, what they termed a COVID care surcharge over and above your regular rates so that it's something that is not there for all time. You're not saying I'm raising prices across the board and scaring people away. You're putting in a surcharge so that you can viably service clients in a safe way during these challenging times. And um, I think that makes it feel more temporary and it also makes it feel more understandable that it's really all about the client care. And that's perhaps something that everybody needs to consider when you are opening your doors again and you are looking at how to make business viable in our new landscape. And perhaps that's part of the change that is going to be embraced. Absolutely. You know, like we were discussing uh, with Richard Brennan and myself that we wanted to create kits where clients can actually purchase uh, in terms of gloves, a mask, a gown, which is disposable. Because you must remember as salon owners, even if, if that disposable kit is 100 rand, and if you're doing 10 clients a day, that's 1000 rand. You can't afford that during yeah. these times. Yeah. So to create, um, you know, a value added service uh, in those ways. And that's what mean when you say reinvent your business because you have to look at it totally differently you know and also we want to keep um all your staff employed you know uh, so you yeah. have to work on a skeleton system um you know like i said longer hours etc and um unfortunately it's you know and fortunately that we all have a second chance we all are healthy we all are well and yeah. i think that um, that we have to look at the positives yeah and we we're gonna hope hopefully go back to a business I agree. Uh, you know what? If you have your health, if you have your life, um, you, uh, you can continue and you can go forward. And you can't, unfortunately, if you don't. So uh, I think everyone needs to remember that, that we are, you know, this, is, this isn't just an inconvenience. It's, it's a genuine, it's a serious risk. So Caroline, thank you so much for taking part. Thank I you, Jess. Um, I'll wrap up your slot now. And you've been an absolute star. I'm really glad that we got the sound right and that you were able Absolutely. to be very, very um, 
valuable input. And um, yes, the disposable equipment is, is a very important thing. And thank you very much. Thank and you, Jess. So now we're going to um, go back to our PowerPoint and we're going to take a look at our next slide. And we have Natasha from Brandis. So I'm going to now see if I can um, find Natasha and bring her up. Uh, yes, there she is. And I've just promoted you to a panelist, Natasha. So hopefully you will now appear um, in a minute or two. Yes, there we go. And I'm going to unmute you. So you should now be able to, to speak. And let me know if you are able to speak, Natasha. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, yes. Thank you. Hi, guys, and welcome. Thank you, JC. Thank you for having me. So, Natasha, we've got a very, very interesting discussion with you, which is um, the path to recovery. And it's all about post-lockdown, which is exciting. Um, starting to soft trade, pricing and logistics. Um, can you can you tell me, well, how are you planning your way forward? What is your roadmap? I want to start with Jason. I want to say, you know what? We're facing very difficult times, all of us, but I want to remind us all here, the bridge of silver wings stretches from the dead ashes of an unforgiving nightmare to a jeweled vision of a life restarted. And that is what we need to focus on here, moving forward and what we're going to do. It's like our previous guest said, we're going to be facing reduced hours, reduced staff. So when you're in the salon, you're going to have to make the most of your time. You're going to have to really focus on consultation and giving value added to each client. Turnover is going to be a challenge for you as a stylist because you're going to be working less hours. Um, we are definitely putting in, uh, firstly, a shift rotation into our salon where stylists each get to work on different days so that each one has an opportunity to work Saturdays. I'm opening the salon on a, Saturday, on a Sunday to provide another opportunity for these stylists to gain extra salon time and also to accommodate clients. Um, something else that I think that might help that we're also looking at is a mobile service for the first while to alleviate the, the influx of clients and allow stylists to go and see to clients in their home. This is a convenient and just a way that we're looking at doing soft trading for the first while. I think that sounds absolutely fantastic. And... Um, how will your how will your prices change post lockdown? What are you foreseeing your extra expenses will be? You know what? Um, I think as salon owners, not only salon owners, stylists in general, we are faced with huge debts when we go back. Um, credit cards, expenses, um, uh, rents that are behind, all things like this. So. Once again, it's about doing, taking what you're an expert at, your expertise, and cashing in on that at this moment. If blondes is your thing and that's what you're going to be doing and that is what your clientele is going to be, it's about giving them extra value and giving them your time. You're going to be spending less time, less, you're going to be spending more time with less clients. You're going to be able to give your clients so much more in the time that you're spending with them mm. as far as making recommendations are concerned for home care for retail our clients like you said earlier are going to be faced with things like hair loss um, extra hair dry from being outside and sitting in the sun when they were so these are things that we can benefit and retail and upsell each service on by doing things like that and just being familiar with product and what we can advise our clients on hair loss dry hair I love that then the other thing that, um, that you touched upon when you sent your brief, which I think is quite important, is that um, the industry is going to need to work together and to accommodate others. And um, you mentioned that you, you'd, uh, you'd looked at what uh, Terenzo is doing with sort of sharing the suites and that you I believe more salons should create a business model that accommodates this. Um, yes, I do. I think what Terenzo has got going with sweets, I was listening to him in, his, in your webinar the other day, it's, it's really a great concept and I think as salon owners we can really cash in on that because they are, I'm just in the northern suburbs and this is something that's very emotional to me, there are so many salons closing down, I've yes. reached out daily to people 
uh, from salon owners, from stylists, their salon closed and they don't know where to go. So I do see that we are going to see post lockdown a lot more home stylists trading from home. We are going to be looking, um, stylists are going to be looking for jobs. I know that as salons, we aren't going to be able to maybe uh, provide them with a full time uh, position. But in my salon, I know a lot of my stylists still make, might not work Sunday. So I'm going to offer to stylists out there who are unemployed at this moment, I may not be able to give you a full-time job, but I can give you a slot on a Sunday. Or days where my stylists are, we are less stylists due to day off or leave, that I can offer slots to these people to just bring their clients that do want a salon experience into the salon. And I think that as salon owners, we should try and all of us try and give this platform to these stylists to just be able to work and put food on their plates because that's what it's about at the end of the day. Yes, um, you know, from Hair News perspective, uh, we have had, ever since we've really started Hair News and even before that, we've had a constant flood of requests from salon owners that they need staff. And um, the lack of staff has been a constant problem in the industry. And I'm actually hoping that um, post coronavirus, it might allow this balance to be a little bit better and um, that perhaps, um, the, you know, with businesses perhaps more consolidating, uh, the supply and demand in terms of staff is perhaps a little bit more balanced and it may, may lead to a better outcome, whichever way people are trying to, to work their, their business model, whether it's a, a small home salon or whether they're continuing in a shopping mall and, um, and they, you know, perhaps people who, who no longer have work elsewhere are looking for a, a lovely venue to now start at. So it may hopefully be positive and we can see you now. Uh, yes, finally. <laughs> Technology is not my strong point. <laughs> Cut there. Um, yes, and um, I think that as there's going to be great opportunities for great stylists looking for work. So if you're in a position to offer stylists a permanent position, this is going to be the time to do it. You're going to have a influx of hairdressers into the trade, which we haven't seen in a very long time, looking for work. So that is going to be, yes, definitely a thing. If you can offer these people a permanent position or even a part-time position, or even start them off on a part-time position, you can build a good relationship with them. And if they do feel they're ready to return to the salon when we are on full swing again, you have a stylist that are already building up a clientele in your business. Yes. So for a salon, this can be a great, great opportunity. For, uh, for stylists, you know what, often as well, um, we get stuck in a rut because we're stuck in the same area, the same salon, the same things. This could be a great challenge for each of you to get out there, spread your wings, yes. and fly, embrace new things, new challenges, yes. new opportunities. Like we said, we're facing a whole new landscape of doing hairdressing. And the nice thing is... to retail, so this is the time to reinvent, rebrand, and rediscover your passion, the thing that we love doing. I think, you know what, Jesse, if I have to say the one thing that lockdown taught me is that I really, really miss what I do to the point of that it became Aww. almost making me depressed every day. And I'm so looking forward to taking that energy back into the salon because for the past, just before lockdown, I mean, I think all of us, we're so trapped in the the end, never ending cycle of turnover, making turnover, making ends meet, we kind of lose track of what we really love and why we're really doing it. And having this continual break now has really taught me, you know, I'm looking forward to going back and doing just a blow dry <laughs> and doing a fabulous set of highlights and seeing my clients who I made connections with. This is what it's about. It's about connections. Um, about connections, I just want to remind the ministers and all these people that say, you know, um, about soft trading and not letting us back in. We form relationships with our clients. Exactly. They're family. They're family. I care about them. I care about their well-being. Not only because I realize the importance of their well-being to my business, but I care about them. I've reached out to so many clients and they've reached out to me during this time and just said, Tash, miss you. Just want to say hi. I miss my weekly chat. So we build relationships and we are going to, moving forward, even on soft trading or whenever we trade, we're going to take this into consideration and do everything to protect our guests. I love those words. That is a very, very inspirational statement. I think everyone must just also be reminded to please stay strong, 
we are not the only country where hairdressing has had a little bit of a lag in starting up. Um, the, the, the government are doing their best to, they're not always going to make the right decision, but they are doing their best to pace the recovery of, of hairdressing in with everything else. Um, and EOHCB and UASA and the Bargaining Council are doing their absolute utmost to engage yeah. with government and to bring the opening date for hair and beauty forward. And just a quick mention, uh, while we're on the topic, we have had a few salons asking us about um, uh, an alternative uh, legal case that, that, um, that people are talking about that now has a, a court date. Um, uh, EHCB do have been in contact with those people, but for now they have concerns and they are not supporting this activity. Um, they, they are regularly meeting, in fact they've got a meeting scheduled this afternoon and um, their stance to it is on the agenda. But the problem is that the concerns are around the effect of this action on the other activities and engagement with government, um, which EOHCB are powering forward because they have the, the right connections and they know how to do the process properly, and also the conditions attached to supporting such an activity. Um, so for now, um, if, before, you, before you put your, your weight behind it, just confirm with EOHCB that everyone's on the same track and that we're all pulling in the same direction because sometimes someone who sort of uh, you know, tries to, to really, in the, in the very best way to be a hero, can actually perhaps um, may, maybe mean that it doesn't go forward as quickly or as easily as it would um, if it was a proper effort that is led by the industry authorities, which is unfortunately where it needs to be led from, Absolutely. and they are very I, capable of doing. I do agree. Back the industry people that are out there doing the fight for us, that's the best way to get this done is to support the institutions that are in place and that have the power to do things. It's all good and well that we're each trying to do things in our own way and I praise all of us for doing that because there's nothing better than getting our voice heard. The more people that we are out there getting our voice heard, the louder we speak about this noise and we actually have a chance of it getting heard. Yes. Um, but yes, follow the right people. Yes, Support exactly. the right institutions that are doing the right things. So yes. that the effort you're putting in is actually contributing and it's not going to waste me. Exactly. Yes, guys, what you can do right now, make your voice heard, support these people that are out there that are fighting the battle for us to get us trading and doing yes. what we love doing. I've, um, thank you so much, Natasha. I've just put thank a quick you. screen up just to, um, so you can all take down the Belinda at hairnews.co.za email address. Should you have any further questions, um, at any stage, something occurs to you because we're now wrapping up, um, please email belinda at hairnews.co.za. She will be extremely happy to, um, to assist you and to, um, to, to forward your question to the right person who is correctly empowered and has the knowledge to answer it. So we're going to wrap up this meeting now. I see we've had some, some great feedback and some questions and um, thank you so much for attending it. If you want to say a quick goodbye on the chat screen, now's the time. And I'm going to, strong, going to um, wrap up now. It was wonderful to have you with us. Thank you so much um, uh, for, for joining us, all, all our panelists. And um, thank you for this wonderful session. And we're now going to end it and um, we will let you know when our next one will be. So thank you.